Joel here with Liquid Files. In this video, I'm going to walk through some of the changes that we've made in Liquid Files version 3.3. Most of the changes in Liquid Files version 3.3 is actually under the hood stuff. So we've changed the database. We've uh, we used to use uh, MySQL. Uh, that's a you know simple and efficient database that has uh, that has some limitations um, that we ran into. For instance, uh, it's not really possible to do full text indexing and searching of full text fields, uh, and uh, we got around that by using a, um, a search engine called Sphinx, and we ran into issues um, throughout the usage, I think it was version 2.3, where we added uh, uh, added Sphinx to do searching for various stuff. And search indexes used to be corrupted and things like that. So we've, we've got rid of and we've moved, uh, moved to, a data, to another database called Postgres. And in the last few months that we've been running it in uh, various places, it's been rock solid. Uh, and uh, yeah. We've also added. Uh, we've also changed, uh, uh, or sorry, we've also added support for HTTP two, which is an update, uh, more efficient update to the HTTP protocol, which supports binary uh, binary transfers and reusage of links uh, or sessions rather. So, so the the browser will keep the session open to 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 the site when it's using HTTP two, and everything becomes faster. Uh, as we don't need to re-establish connections all the time. We've uh, done a lot of interface uh, caching. So whenever we are looking at, uh, for instance, uh, all, the, all the messages, uh, messages being sent, uh, that have been being displayed, uh, these, uh, these, the, the interface uh, is caching this uh, uh, internally in a much more efficient way. And when we're just browsing the site, uh, there's caching that makes everything uh, that makes everything faster. Uh, under the hood stuff, that's nicer. When we're actually uploading files uh, through uh, up to, to Liquid Files now, it's using a binary protocol where it used to use uh, an HTTP form-based upload, so that should also improve speeds. We've uh, the first thing, but this is that's all stuff that happens under the hood, and you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't see them now except that things will be more stable and faster. The first sort of visible change that you'll see is uh, that the message compose screen has been updated. So the, the, we used to have the message settings on, on, on this side and we now move them down here and rearrange stuff and added verbiage to, so it should be more clear exactly what's going on. And the attached files um, um, moved over here and we're also, actually uh, scrolling this nicely. So even if you add like a hundred files here, a couple of hundred files here, these won't scroll through through the through a, you know a long section. It will just keep in keep within here and will will actually just scroll inside the um, inside the page here instead, which makes everything just sort of nicer to, nicer to deal with. The first sort of major feature that we've added, uh, and I'm not going to talk at great length because we have, a, we have a, a video that goes through this in great detail, but it's something that we call action scripts. So you can, if you go here, you can see um, the documentation, and this is a this is a more in-depth walkthrough of action scripts. So I will just briefly highlight it here. Uh, but we've uh, we first we we used to be able to do both password validation as an external script and attachment upload validation as an external script. This was something that you had to install in in, in the in the Linux uh, file system before. So we've moved this and we now call this action scripts. Uh, and we've added sort of similar to the attachment upload validation. We've added a share files upload validation. So this is something. Uh, uh, where, where, when a file gets uploaded, we, you can program a script to do something custom that you want to do. So, for instance, if you have a data leakage protection system that you want to send 
whatever attachment or share file to before you allow it to be sent or used, that now you can do that. Uh, password validation, we, we just whenever someone enters a password, you can write a custom script uh, that validates that password if you want to. So for like very in-depth password validations. Um, the new thing that we've added is the use delivery action. So, so this is when a message is being sent to a specific user. And we have an example here. So we have a script uh, that we call upload to, upload to SMB file share, so Windows file share. So when this script executes, it will parse through the message data. You can walk. You can you can look in the. So this is this is an example on how it will how it will look, uh, and we will send. So when the message is being delivered, so this this is very similar to to how the API looks. If you if you're familiar with that, so so this is a message. It has an ID and all this stuff. It has a bunch of attachments. It's stored somewhere in the file system, which we're interested in in this case. So when a message has been sent, it's been sent. To well, in this on documentation example, John Doe at comp, company one.com, uh, and then we can then use this information to do something with this data. In this case, in this uh, this specific example, we want to continue to upload the file to a Windows file share. So we are just going to look at the attachment and the system file, and then we're going to take that and send that on. And this is what this script is doing. It looks at the message data. It reads the JSON. So you have to, you can program this in any any uh, language that you're comfortable with. So like Ruby or Python or Bash or Perl or whatever, whatever you whatever you're comfortable with, you can program. Uh, that's running in a CentOS Linux system. Uh, in this case, it's Ruby, and we are parsing the JSON. And this is some some JSON, some some Ruby commands that it that uh, extracts the message attachments. And for each attachment, it will grab the system file and the system file will be copied to the SMB client command that will put this file onto this share using this username and password and store it on the, on the file share. So, so that's what the script does. And then we can then go into a user and then we can configure an action for this user. So what this action does now is whenever a message is being sent to this user, then that script will be, this specific script will be executed. So now you can uh, create uh, uh, workflows where, where you send something to a specific user and it gets automatically uploaded to a Windows file share or FTP server or sent through some document management system and things like that. Uh, which makes this, you know, liquid files a lot more flexible for this, uh, this type of use case. So we will hope you will have fun with that. The next major feature is uh, uh, strong authentication using SMS. So we, uh, uh, so we've had before, uh, strong uh, TOTP, so time-based one-time passwords. So this is applications such as Google Authenticator and Authy that are running on mobile devices that uh, that can be used for authentication. So it's, so it's a time-based one-time password system uh, that we've had for a few releases now. Duo oops, uh, authentication was the first one, first time that we, first system that we added, and now we also added SMS. Uh, SMS based of authentication. So again, there's more. Uh, there's an in-depth description of how this works if you if you look on the documentation site. Uh, but basically, we we copy the settings. In this case, it won't work because we need to sign up and get an API key uh, from Clickathel in this case. Uh, but look in the documentation to see exactly how that works. And then we can configure on a user or group basis. And we can say that for this specific group, we want to set SMS 
uh, it says SMS one time one time password required. So they so we require users in this group, the local user group, uh, in this case, to use SMS based authentication. So if we set this next time the user log on, they will have to uh, so they will have to authenticate with the, the with the phone number. So the first time they will have to enter their phone number and uh, and prove that they are them. And then from there, then on, as soon as they log on, they will be required to enter the one-time password that is sent using SMS to them. So this is going to be specifically nice for say external users that you still want to provide additional authentication for but you don't feel that you can require them to install a specific app on their mobile device so so this one will work uh, perfectly for that so please have a look in the in the two-factor authentication this is sms based two-factor authentication documentation and this video for 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 specifics on how to set that up other changes that we've done is uh, for instance with admins um, throughout the, the years that we've been uh, running liquid files uh, there's been requests going on both ways whether an admin should be able to access user data or not uh, and where some uh, organization says well we need to have the ability to audit whatever our whatever our users send. We need to be able to audit that, and it has to be silent. They cannot know that we're auditing them. Whereas other people say, well, admins are not business people, and they should not have access to what our business people are sending back and forth to their to their their partners and uh, external contractors, whatever it may be. Uh, so now. With the Liquid Files version 3.3, you can configure this however you want. Whether an admin should have access to use data or not, and whether that should be logged or not when they download a file. Uh, so if we go back and, uh, well, if we look at, we have some mes message here. So say this uh, message from Joe Juicer, Joe Juicer has been has sent this file to Jane Doe at accountants.com. If we configure this setting to say that admins should not have access to this data, we can see that these links are now uh, are now. Uh, grayed out, we cannot click on this link, we cannot no longer download this, and we can uh, we can't we can't view the message. The message is not here here to view anymore. We can see that the message is there, we can delete messages, but we can't actually view the message anymore. And uh, obviously keen uh, observers of uh, security will notice that I just made this change myself, but that's because I'm in the sys, sys admin group and uh, sys admins can can always do everything so so this is really for your admins and uh, that you can define admins that have or haven't have access if a sysadmin changes is there will be logs and uh, and uh, well basically we we don't uh, we don't try to solve the the issue if you don't trust your own sysadmins so sysadmins, we assume, can always log on to the Linux file system and stuff like that anyway and access anything uh, silently. But there will be logs if they do it through the Liquid Files interface. The final thing that I wanted to talk to you and show is, uh, is a setting called uh, uh, delete attachments after. So on default, a, uh, an attachment will, will be deleted off the Liquid File system the night after it has expired. So if you want to keep attachments around for longer, so this could be, for instance, if you want to be able to, uh, if you want to be able to resend them to other users after they they have after they have expired, then you can or after for this is for, this is a global setting for all your users. You can configure this to say you know 90 days. So for 90 days. Uh, after a message has expired, 
the attachment will still be available for that user and for admins uh, so that they can, uh, well, an admin that has access to user data, obviously, can access these messages and the user can still attach these to file links and to other messages. And we've also added a setting that, that we exclude files over a certain size. So in order to keep uh, um, size, data size, uh, under control if you if you have files that are that are larger than than in this case a uh, thousand megabytes they will be deleted on the night after the expiration but you can tweak this however you want so that uh, so that messages will be will be kept for a couple of days or uh, for however long you want to have in the liquid file system after they have uh, after they have expired so so that's it for uh, for uh, for liquid files version 3.3 there are some other some other changes and please see the release notes for for some other changes that we that we that we've made uh, for instance we've added you know tls version 1.3 support not widely supported in browsers but but we 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 now supported on the uh, actually i see one one more thing i wanted to show you here uh, we we've 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 got a lot of requests uh, that for users for companies that want to want someone or have a sysadmin function or something to see all emails that being sent from liquid files and we've added that so if you add a bcc all that means that that any email that's sent from sent from liquid files will be sent to a to to the specific user so now you can have a, a SUS admin or some some log function or something that you want to that 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 will see everything that's being sent from liquid files. So if that's of interest to you, then just add uh, a BCC all here. Uh, but yeah, that was it for liquid files version 3.3. There's uh, this a few more things that you, that you can see uh, that we've added, and uh, and we will hope that you will enjoy liquid files and liquid and the updates that we've done in liquid files version 3.3. So thank you.